live? I hope we're live. I hate that little stop right in the beginning. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about a warning that Jamie Dimon has come out with about the banks. We've got a couple of stories about banks, but I want you to understand this. We are in a very interesting time right now where there are a lot of people in the media, both in the mainstream and in social media, that for years have been touting this housing expansion, how everything's going great. Regardless of the shutdown, they were super excited. This is how you make money, blah, blah, blah. This is how you sell all this stuff. And everything is awesome, right? It's like the Lego theme uh, song running in your head over and over and over again. Now I've done that to you. So, but we're in that spot now where it is obvious. You had the people that said the doom and gloomers, things were bad, things were not looking good. Then you had the people that were saying everything looked great. Now all the people that were saying everything looks great are going, wait a minute, all right, something doesn't feel right. I know what I'm hearing from the government. I understand what I'm hearing from banks and economists. I got a feeling those aren't the truth. And so what's happening is they're starting to shift. And then what you're about to see is everybody just looking down the bottom of the roller coaster and screaming out loud and that's when their crash happens okay so it seems like the scales used to be like this you got the doom and gloomers everything's bad the, the really good everything's great everything's awesome now it's like oh man and it's going down so here we go out of market insider jp morgan ceo jamie Dimon says he wouldn't be a buyer of a bank and sounds the alarm in the economy now before i begin you know that i read all of these stories right in front of you live and then talk about them. Uh, I will tell you this, Jamie Dimon, I believe is one of the smartest guys in the room. Why? Because he is privy to the most amount of information, type one, if you agree. He owns and runs the largest bank in the country and he gets information so fast and so plentiful compared to any of us or especially even economists or, I mean, I would say his level of information comes at the same level as what the Federal Reserve gets, right? Why? Because he's probably one of the owners. <laughs> uh, so the truth is banks own the biggest, what is it? The five biggest banks in the world own the Federal Reserve. And so there's ownership there. And so they're all scanning this information. So right now you've got the CEO of the largest bank saying he wouldn't be a buyer of a bank. Well, the reason why is because these banks that are falling apart right now and the FDIC is trying to split them up, they still can't uh, sell off the commercial mortgage-backed securities portion of these portfolios. They are dead weight. They're, as a matter of fact, they're actually toxic assets. All right. So let's dive in. Jamie Dimon criticized the proposal, or sorry, the proposed capital rules on lenders as a downside for economic growth. Well, again, remember, Basel was a Basel three requirements. There's a Basel four. I'm blanking out right now. Um, requires that banks hold a little bit more money in reserves to be able to weather storms like we've seen in 2008 and just recently in 2023. Bank of America CEO, Brian Moynihan, freaking out over the additional 2% that he's going to have to hold back, citing that he can't stay uh, profit or sorry, he can't stay competitive with other banks, right? And you think 2%, really, if that's what's holding you back, then we're really screwed. These banks are in trouble. Jamie Dimon now is jumping on criticizing these new regulations. They want to be able to gamble with your money. They want to be able to make exorbitant profits and pay you pennies of interest for your money. I want to remind you real quick, JP Morgan has a great history of stealing. And this is why. When JP Morgan started, his father, um, his father was running the bank and he went in and he saw all this gold in this vault. And he goes, dad, how often do people come in and retrieve their gold? And he says, really, very rarely. And he came up with this idea. He goes, well, if, that, if that's the case, why don't we lease this gold to, to another bank? Let's lease this out. The ownership of this. And his dad was totally against it. He goes, no, we're not going to do that because there could be all kinds of problems. It wasn't until his father died that he started to do that. And he began what I believe is a modern day fractional reserve bank lending or banking where you put your money into the bank and they're able to, to borrow uh, X amount percentage, a massive percentage of it, most of it, quite frankly, and then go and tie it to this leveraged, crazy investments. Now they've got safe investments too. They've got bond portfolios and everything, right? 
because banks are diversified, but they are out gambling with your money. And I think it's very dangerous. And so we're at the point right now where the Federal Reserve is tapped. They came out and they proved it. They said this last spring was so bad. It was so bad. This was crazy. It's worse in 2008. We're tapped. The FDIC didn't say that last time. They're saying, we're done. We need more money. So now the Fed goes, well, the, the small banks are insolvent. They're screwed. We have a banking crisis happening. So the big banks are going to have to do it. Then the big banks started whining about it. This is absolutely blowing my mind. Sorry, I digress, but I just want people to get this through their mind. Now, real quick, there's a video that I did on my other channel, and I put a link. It's uh, the Real Estate Ninja. I put a link to that in the top line of the description. I really would like you because these videos, I went and got it edited. I did a live. YouTube would not share it. I went and got it uh, professionally edited. And it is about the, and I set up a whiteboard and I show you where housing crashes because that's the most important part in all of this. Remember, mortgage-backed securities took down the banks back then. Commercial mortgage-backed securities are taking down the banks now. You need to understand why. And I show on a chart where uh, the level of mortgages, income, jobs, and all that stuff plays into a housing collapse or a real estate collapse. So please go check that. And please, if you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button too, because with everything that's happening lately, this last week on YouTube has been a whirlwind. I even met with YouTube yesterday and they are, they were reluctant to tell me what was going on. Let's put it that way. They didn't, they didn't really give me a lot of good information. They said, yep, we see the views are different. (laughs) They said there's some weird glitches going on. So they didn't really want to tell me. Sorry, I digress. That, That link's in there. Um, the JP Morgan CEO also cited other pressures such as fiscal deficits and monetary policy. So let's talk about that. It says JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon reiterated his opposition to the Federal Reserve's proposed capital regulations, warning such measures would dampen lending and economic growth. He's straight up saying he doesn't like the fact that the Federal Reserve is asking him to hold more money in his bank for an emergency. How do you like that? What does that make you feel like when you start thinking about your bank? He says, I wouldn't be a big buyer of a bank. The head of the largest lender quipped during a financial conference on Monday. The proposed changes would apply to banks with more than 100 billion in assets, requiring JP Morgan to hold 30% more in capital than a European lender, Jamie Dimon said. So here, the Federal Reserve knows the banks are crashing. They're trying to implement a rule to make this not happen. And the banks are complaining. Think about that. Now, remember, I've told you that Europe's going to collapse before America. And here you go. Jamie Dimon saying, look, the banks over there are able to spend like crazy. See, see where this is going to come from. This is going to happen. It's been prophesied. I'm more afraid of what God's going to do this economy than, than Satan. Satan actually wants this thing to keep going. He likes being able to rob you. Uh, that's that's just the truth through debt and credit and all of that stuff. He says here, uh, to comply, the bank, which bought troubled lender First Republic earlier this year, is starting to repurchase stock at lower levels. Is this what they want? It's is that good long term? Jamie Dimon added. But Dimon sees growth as threatened by more than just stricter capital rules and warned that today's economic strength shouldn't warrant expectations for a years long rebound. To say that consumer is strong today, meaning you are going to have a booming environment for years, is a huge mistake, he said. And remember, he's trying to run that fence line right now, not trying to cause panic, but he's telling you right now, he goes, to, the consumer's not strong is what he's saying. While consistent disinflation is a strong labor market, we have helped Wall Street warm up to hopes for a soft landing scenario. Diamond has been consistently bearish and named a slew of headwinds that could capsize the economy's trajectory. The reason why he's done this in the past is because he wants to be able to look back and go, see, I was right. Look when I said this, look when I said that. He says it in a really mild uh, manner. I come on and use his quotes and go, this is really serious. This is actually going to happen. He knows what he's talking about. Um, but then he goes, look, I was right. Now sign up for my bank because I'm the smartest guy in the, in the town. My bank didn't go under. All right. So people need to understand where these little uh, bits of information come out and why they do it. And they put this out in the press. It gets very little press when it comes out. 
but they always cite it later when you know the stocks are crashing, real estate's crashing, CNBC's going, what do we need? We need a soundbite. Okay, let's get that one that we didn't push out really good two years ago when Jamie Dimon actually told the truth. And then let's play it. And then by then, everyone is losing their homes. And that's where I come in and I want to stop that. Type four, if you agree, you want to stop that. You believe, you understand the message of Ninja Nation is a nation of people that are prepared, not scared. They know the banks are going to capitalize on this. They always whisper the warnings. And then they're shouting from the rooftops when it's too late for you to do anything. And it's important for you, type four, if you agree, it's important for you to have the wealth of the nation, the middle class has to own the wealth. So we got to get people ready for this. Now, he says, among key concerns were central bank efforts to limit economic liquidity, especially Fed's quantitative tightening campaign and an increasing reliance on fiscal deficits. I think there's a false sense of security that those two things will end up being okay. I don't know, he said during a conference with Q&A. Added to that, Diamond cited the Inflation Reduction Act, global remilitarization and greenification of the economy as factors whose influence is hard to gauge given a few historical comparisons. Now, let me speak to that. This is really important. So he, he cites Inflation Reduction Act, global remilitarization and greenification. He says there's not a lot of uh, times in history to look back on and go, okay, this is what happened in history. Again, a smart man is looking back in history and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill some gaps right now because I guarantee you if Jamie was watching this, you never know. He might because he give, put enough thumbs up. He's going to be in this comment section, not comment section, but you know what I mean. You look back into history and you go, okay, there's nothing on board with this. Well, let's throw a couple more in. Never in history have we doubled the money supply this fast. Never in history did we shut everyone down. Never in history, oh, well, the Spanish flu, did we get everyone to wear masks and get freaked out. But actually, technically, we didn't even get to do that in, 20, in 1918. Because the way media was spread, most people in rural areas didn't listen. Okay, so there's been nothing in history to compare with what's just happened in the last two years. Copy. That means really bad things are coming. Because I don't know if you agree, but type five, if you think this whole Bidenomics and the Inflation Reduction Act is a load of malarkey, it's total crap, it's moronic, it's like steaming pile of dung. Can I say anything more negative about it? It is the opposite of reducing inflation. It will increase inflation. And Biden shouldn't be writing it. Oh, he didn't write it anyway. Just a bunch of puppet tears wrote it for him. It's complete crap. Greenification? Who needs that? Type six if you believe in global warming. I'm waiting. There's no sixes. Type seven, if you think global warming is a total lie perpetrated on the earth to try and steal money, rob you, and put you in fear. Just curious. Yep. Oh, oh, we got some sevens. Oh, crazy sevens. Crazy sevens. Weird. So we're all in agreement. Copy. Sweet. They want to rob, steal, and destroy you. Oh, wait. Kill, steal, and destroy. Oh, wait. That's Satan's mandate. Yeah. Copy. That's what the globals are trying to do. Well, it's time to fight back. And that's how we fight back. Every time you 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 speak your word, your words of wisdom over the earth and say, nope, they're not going to win. The globalists aren't going to win this time. Negative. You be, you've won a lot of battles. We're going to win this war. We got Jesus Christ behind us. We're going to win this war. I'm not here to preach to you today, but I'm going to tell you right now. Start shouting from the rooftops. Thank you also to everybody in the last couple of weeks that have shared videos of my channel. I cannot get over it. I'm so humbled. I thank you so much. All right, let's dive back into some more crap. Oh, hey, also, it's warm in there. Um, I've got another story about Truist Bank too I'm about to bring up in a few minutes, okay? Um, so he says, it puts me in a highlighted on a highlighted edge of caution. He said, adding, these things are tectonic differences from what you're experiencing have, or you've experienced since 1945. You think? You think? Like, good job, Jamie Dimon. You're crushing it. I love how you wordsmith. You're a lot smarter than me. Ninja just blah. But if it's the truth when I uh, uh, show it, then there you go. We're going to get a lot of people ready. We ain't living through another 2008. We are going to party like it's 1999 when 2008 part do starts. The banks are going to be like, Oh, this is going to be exciting. And then all of a sudden, Ninja Nation is going to come from behind them, smack them upside the head and buy up all the assets. 
All right, here we go. Next story. It's not a Reuters. It's about Truist Bank. Isn't that nice? Hey, what do you want to do? Name your bank. Well, let's let's make it sound like trust. We'll call it Truist. Like it's the trustiest, worthiest bank ever. Okay, why? Well, because we don't have any deposits. What do you mean? Well, we're just gonna we're gonna take deposits from other banks. We're gonna what? We're gonna rent them. That's what Truist does. They rent deposits. Hey, you, let me. One of your deposits might be rented at Truist Bank, and the investors are screwed over there. So here we go. This is another big bank that's going down. Wait, can I say that? Can I say that? I, don't sue me. I'm just saying. I'm not a financial expert. I'm just a dude with a brohawk a dream and a a highly inflated cup of coffee. By the way, it was a dollar forty last week. It's a dollar sixty-two. Do me a favor, real quick. Somebody figure out the percentage change in one week that a McDonald's coffee has gone up. I'm only complaining because, well, I do love the coffee. And yeah, I get it. There's chemicals in it. But my point being is I'm going to get those comments. It's cheap coffee. I'm not buying any of that Starbucks crap. Truist Bank plans sizable job cuts. And I want to remind you about the link to that video I did on the Real Estate Ninja channel. I put the link at the top of the description. Please check that out. Also, please check me out on X. I'm going to get a little louder, I think. And X will let me do it. The tubes won't stupid but x will so check me out there but uh i really want you to see that other uh video because it's very i took some time i actually did a little bit of work i drew a graph and i got in front of a whiteboard it's totally different um but i wanted you to see how important it was how to scale figure out when this is going to happen sean thanks for the super chat when you're going to see these the real estate come down okay because these all these banks are crashing because of real estate both real residential and commercial and in the commercial it's mostly residential. All right. Six. Thank you so much for Super Chat. Here we go. U.S. Bank Truist plans sizable job cuts at, to save 300 million in costs. So, you know, you know, when you're already uh, running a bank that's uh, based off lies, like we don't have uh, deposits, what's the easiest way to save money? Fire people. And it's easy to fire people these days because you just look at your mortgage origination office. You're just looking. Hello. Hello. Oh, there's no. Nobody doing any work in here. Copy, you're all fired. And they save money. It's sad, but I've been warning about this for a long time. Truist Financial is planning sizable reductions to its workforce over the next few months to save roughly $300 million in costs. It says the bank's revenue for the current quarter was likely to be in line with its expectations. Crap. I mean, honestly, crap. Because, I mean, let's just say it. Let's just call the spade a spade. Uh, it's really easy when all the banks a year ago went, uh, things aren't good. I mean, not good, like not as good as bad as good, good as bad. I can't tell you. It's just, just expect lower. The bar, you know, the bar used to be here. Just where did it go? I lost it. The bar is, well, it's down on the ground. But when next, next time we tell you something, it'll be a little bit above the ground, which is still really low. So they're setting the bar low. It says the layoffs, part of the larger cost savings program, will be underway from the current quarter current because crap's going down now uh to the first quarter of 2024 true has said in a presentation to investors <laughs> don't sell our stock <laughs> we're doing something <laughs> hold on <coughs> get it together ninjas not professional you're live in front of like 3200 but only 800 hit the thumbs up you're not doing a very good job Shut up. All right, here we go. It says here, um, this was in this, they were talking to investors. Uh, Truist said in a presentation to investors on Monday, sending shares 2% higher in mid morning. Yes, stock traders love it when companies fire people. Sad, but true. And then all of a sudden, Ninja Nation's going to love it when the stock traders lose their butts because the stock market tanks. But anyway, that's just neither here nor there. Other cost savings initiatives. Carly, thank you so much can't answer that right now. I just don't know what to do. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm going to answer this. What about a construction loan or property you hold the deed to? What do you do? Well, there's actually a little bit more to that, but I love holding the deed uh, during projects where I'm getting a lot of money down, <laughs> knowing that I have the right to be able to pull that property back if the person that bought the property isn't able to finish it. And then they're just taking care of the property for me and putting improvements on. So it honestly, if everything's set up right and I know that I can uh, take the property back because that's how the world works, right? You buy something, you can't perform on it. You're loaning money, borrowing money. 
the property goes back to the uh, rightful owner. I love it when people put money into my properties and put them, make them nicer. So anyway, but currently I don't have any of that going on. Um, hey, Six wants a shout out real quick. Six Trading Studies is asking for a shout out on his channel. Go check him out. Thank you so much, Six. No, I never thought about doing that, giving someone a super chat and say, hey, would you check, check out my channel? Never thought about that. Anyway, sorry, I digress, everyone. I apologize. Um, other cost-saving initiatives include, include aggressively managing third-party spend. <laughs> third-party spend. I have to worry more about getting first-party deposits, but hey. Further reducing our corporate real estate for foot foot. foot. See, okay. Hi, I'm the Economic Ninja. I'm the first person ever on YouTube or real uh, or Google to talk about the commercial real estate apocalypse that is coming. I said this first in June of 2021. Google was nice enough to rank me highest because I was the only one talking about CMBS. You can go way back on my channel. Nobody talked about it. And I'm not like tooting my own horn. I left it at home. But it's my point being is that this is happening right now. And that's why people need to see these easily identifiable uh, time markers to be able to say, oh yeah, market's tanking. Yes, only amount of time for the sheep figured out. They're too busy trying to figure out which mask uh, works the best. Uh, once they, they get in a real dose, suck in a dose of uh, reality, they're going to be running for the exits. So even Truist is telling you right here, they're further reducing corporate real estate footprint and rationalizing tech spend because tech has not been doing so well. CEO, and once you, everyone figures out what's going on with NVIDIA, woo, go check out Jack for that stuff. Um, all right, so let's see here. Uh, Bill Rogers at Nobody Special Finance. Bill Rogers at the Barclays Financial Services Conference said this. So, so he's he's going to liquidate. Analyst at Goldman Sachs said the expense program helps provide a credible path to holding costs relatively flat. Truist added that along with tech optimization and organizational simplification, it will yield a combined $750 million in savings over 12 to 18 months. That is massive. Three quarters of a billion dollars saved by, man. It also expects expense growth in 2024 to be significantly lowered in 2023. So remember, they're firing people and bragging and getting their stock to go up. He says here, we aren't convinced. We, will, we aren't convinced it'll be enough for investors. We're hoping for more substantial cuts. This came from uh, analysts at brokerage Raymond James. Banks, which typically thrive in times of stable economic growth, are grappling with the possibility of a recession that might lead to troubled cons customers finding themselves burdened under debt. Sh the heck with recession? Screw that. Look at the banks crashed in 2007, 2008, which created the recession of 2008. That's when the recession started. Recession doesn't start till everything goes bad. Well, right now, banks crashing. Recession's coming. Yeah. Who cares about recession? Let's talk about the actual real reason. The banks. He says, uh, Truist, however, said it was confident the capital markets uh, business will rebound next year and expect deal-making recovery as an opportunity for revenue growth going ahead. Type 10, if you believe that uh, Truist is right and that business is going to be robust and rebounding in, excuse me, next year. Just curious. No 10s? Type 11, if you think it's all going to crap in a handbasket. <coughs> Point being is this. There's nothing wrong when you know something's wrong. When you know something bad's coming, you simply, you're standing on train tracks, see a train, copy. You're trying to warn your friend, your family member. Just, hey, do me a favor. Put the name or the family member's name, either the friend's name or the family member's name in the comments right now that you're trying to warn. Imagine this person's on the railroad tracks. Their back's to the train. You're looking at them. Yeah, yeah, copy. Uh, everything's great. Yeah, Biden's doing an awesome job. Oh, gosh, yeah, Trump said mean things. And you're looking behind, behind there you're going, okay, yeah. So, uh, but like, do you want to talk about like, you know, uh, countries buying gold, bricks, uh, crypto, and the train's coming close. You're like, hey, okay, copy. Yeah, I know Trump really said really mean things. Yeah, I copy. Okay, look. Yeah, I can't hear you. You got a mask on. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to get off the rails now. And then, well, boom. That's, that's what happens. It happens that fast. And then, you know, if the train comes, smacks them, you know, runs them over, they stand back up. Now I remember this. Hey, I'm, I'm losing my house. Hey, I'm a repo man took my car. And you're like, awkward. All you got to do is get off the rails. Super simple. 
That's my message to you. Guys, everyone, check out that link below. Please let me know what you think in the comments on my other channel, Real Estate Ninja. Please suggest consider subscribing. You don't have to. Uh, but I want you to see that whiteboard video. I think it's so important to check that out because I really do explain the difference between it's not just about mortgage rates. It's about so many other things that you can tell you. It's so easy to say, oh my gosh, the housing market's in serious trouble. I hope you guys have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.